Right, it's time to put on the white or the highlights on Rusty. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the SAA version of white, which is the opaque white, as you can see there. And what I need to do with that is on my palette here, got some white in there, I'm going to mix it down with a little bit of water. Just kind of thin it down a little bit. You don't want it too thick, but if you have it too runny, it tends to kind of disappear when it dries. So I'm just going to use that one, I think. And to protect the paper, I'm going to use a little bit of white paper. Just to stop getting any oils or grease off my hand onto the paper. So we'll start off around this area here. It's very faint, but that's the way it needs to be. Otherwise, be too bright. This is a, a Cotman double zero brush. You've got to make sure that you don't, as I mentioned, cover everything up because you want to maintain all the details underneath. So the idea of the highlights is, as it states, just highlights, just little areas here and there, just to kind of make it stand out that little bit more. If you tend to blob it too much, then just tease it with your finger. And if you find it's too white, you can easily just touch it with a damp, clean brush just to soften it down that little bit. So kind of working up, I want to get rid of some of this hard edge here. So if I just tease it out a little bit, just by putting some very fine lines just to bring it out, a few little bits coming out here and there, a few fine hairs. Especially around this area here as well. Again on the photo, which will pop in in a minute, you'll see there's it's quite light in this area. And obviously you need to be able to show the form When the watercolour white is on your palette, it can dry quite quickly. So you've got to make sure you keep adding a little bit of water in there, a bit more paint, a bit more pigment. One or two that kind of branch over like that. If you find it's too stark, too white, so I'll just wash my brush out and I'll show you what I can do. With a clean, damp brush, you can just soften that down a little bit more. Just to kind of tease it back a little bit. And then with a piece of tissue, just dampen it off. That's all you need to do. I always like doing the highlights at the end of a painting because um, that really makes the painting pop out. It kind of brings it to life that little bit more. So again, just a few here and there. You can barely see them, but it's enough to kind of create the effects of light shining on the fur. Barely visible. If I did this in acrylic, um, it would work the same way. You just water the acrylic down a little bit so it's not too stark, it's not too white. You've got to be careful with acrylic because the and the paint can dry very quickly on your brush, so you have to use an older brush. Or if you don't mind using brushes up, then it's not a problem. I'm a bit, um, a bit tight when it comes <laughs> to using brushes. And so I like to kind of maintain my brushes the best way I can. For example, if I'm mixing paint, when I'm mixing paint, I use an old brush to mix the paint in the palette. The old brush being something like this one here which is ancient, but um, it works. It's just there for mixing the paint in the palette. That way you can you save the tips of the brush. So these little fine tips, you, you save those tips by reducing any mixing which you do. I mean, these little brushes which I use, this is a synthetic brush. It will last me two or three paintings. And then 
I will replace it with another one and they'll save this old brush for doing acrylic with. And it's quite light in this area so I want to just kind of add a bit more in this area just to kind of bring it a bit more of a form to the side of the head. I know traditionally with watercolour you tend to reserve the white of the paper but the method I use because I go into such detail trying to reserve all these fine lines would be very tricky. I want these to be a bit brighter so I'm going to make the white a little bit thicker so basically that's water but again I don't want to fill in all these dark marks underneath I need them to show through. I don't want this edge too sharp, so I just want to bring a few odd ones out. It's always wise to, if you can pull out to the picture, then that works out better. Then you've got a nice tapered line as you pull out. Okay, now let's bring a few odd ones around. Keep there in the direction slightly, not too acutely, but just, just a few different angles here and there. So it will make a difference. Got a few odd ones knocking about in here as well. If you want to ask any questions about how I do this or anything that I use, you're more than welcome to put a little post below. And I'll do my best to answer your question for you. I'm pretty quick on the computer. I want it most nights. Also bear in mind, I have done a video. A bit of a self thing going on here now. But I, I have done a video, a DVD. Which is 2 hours and 53 minutes, I think. And this will show you how I paint a harvest mouse. I'll try and put a link below for you in a minute. But it's using the same techniques which I use now, from start to finish. It doesn't cost a fortune when you think it's nearly three hours long. It's um, give you some ideas, but also tell you the materials which I use and um, the techniques as well. How to use masking fluid. Tips and tricks, things to avoid. I don't want to cover all this in down here. Got to think because there's a bit of a curve here, so I want to maintain some of the darks underneath there. So I don't want to kind of cover that completely. There's plenty of different brushes out there for doing something like this. You can use an old brush and spray the bristles apart, dip it into the paint and wipe a little bit off. Using the sprayed brush you can probably get a similar effect. But you've got less control over it so far, so good. Just put that a few tips. Oh, that's, uh, okay. Right, what I need to do is think about the nose. We've got a highlight area here. Let's bring the photo back in. Okay, so we've got highlights around the tip of the nose, and this area here is quite shiny, but yet dull at the same time. So what I'm going to do, just put a little bit of white paint there, what's called white. Wash your brush out, and then with a damp, clean brush, just tease a little bit, soften it down. Sort of email, <laughs> soften it down a little bit more. I'm trying to do a tutorial, though, do you mind? <laughs> and that should be enough just to soften it. That will dry a little bit lighter than that. Remember, it gets very muddy if you're not careful, watercolor white. So we just soften it down to there. Okay, right, let's go for the highlights on the nose. Now the highlights tend to be quite little dots really, so I'm just going to put a little one down here in a minute. And these are tiny, tiny dots, 
change the direction of your brush, turn your brush around a few times because sometimes a brush can get like a chiseled edge and then all the lines, all the dots will be in the same direction so keep moving your brush around, Give it, twist it in your fingers just tiny tiny dots, that's all they are I've already put the detail underneath, let's put a couple around here or so, more than a couple I know Um, so we're going to have a go. But remember, if you want to see how I do it, step by step, in real time video, to a few bits where I fast forwarded where it's a bit boring. Uh, there was that uh, 2 hours 53 minutes of video footage, which has taken me months to put together. But it'll give you some idea on what to do. Um, and how to paint a harvest mouse. Little, cute little harvest mouse. I'll put a link here again for you. Bit of a sell I know again, but I have to do it. But, you know, people like to watch my videos and they keep asking me questions how I do things. So I've tried to answer all of those questions within that video for you. I'm sure there'll be more, which I don't mind at all. Right. Thank you for watching this. And remember, if you want to leave any comments, please do so. Take care. Bye-bye.